What is good, everybody? Juliana Page here, and it is Momentum Monday. If you are new here, Momentum Monday is all about taking a minute to reflect on what is good in your life, which is this message in and of itself, which we'll get to in a second, but also really being reflective and intentional about what you are doing so that you can actually do things that are intentional and focused and bring you the results that you're after. Okay. So Momentum Monday is all about building the right momentum so that you can let momentum carry you after you make these good decisions. Okay. So we take every Monday to lay a good foundation for you to build the week on so that you can finish better than you started. All right. So today we're going to talk about, sorry, I'm buffering something over here. We're going to talk about taking time to enjoy your life. And I know that this sounds like, well, duh, like I obviously am supposed to take time to enjoy my life, but really though, like, do we actually do it? And that's not like going out and getting hammered so that you like forget things for a minute. That's not, um, necessarily zoning out to trash TV, right? It's really intentional. Am I enjoying my life? Am I present in this moment? Am I appreciating what is in my life? Am I grateful for all the blessings that I've been giving? Am I celebrating people that are in my life? It's really, really different. So John 1010 is a beautiful word. And I'm going to actually read it to you from the message translation. And it says this, a thief, is only there to steal and kill and destroy. Do you notice any of that happening in your life? Just take a a little inventory. I came, this is Jesus, I came so that they can have real and eternal life, more and better life than they've ever dreamed of. Okay, so God promises that we can have a life that is far greater than we dare ask, think, or imagine, right? He wants us to have fullness of life and confidence in that, right? It's a promise. However, are we claiming that? Are we declaring that? Are we walking in that? Often the answer is no. Like I know a lot of people that say that they're in relationship with God, but they don't look like it, right? And I've been that human also. So I can say this. That it's a choice. It's a choice to have and enjoy your life. Okay. So let me give you some context around this so that you can understand as well. Now, I didn't have a good beginning in my life, but I made up my mind to have a good finish. And the word tells me too that the end of a thing is greater than the beginning of a thing. So that could be an encouragement for you too. If you were given sort of a mixed bag to start with, if you're not completely happy with the cards that you were dealt, you can still choose how to play them. Okay. And how to use that and build from it. Okay. It might not have been ideal, but you have God. So don't forget that factor. All right. So because of a very turbulent upbringing, because of a lot of trauma, a lot of pain, a lot of dysfunction, I grew up really fast. There was a lot of gaps that I was feeling right that a child isn't necessarily supposed to do. Okay. So because of that, I didn't know about resting and relaxing and feeling safe and having fun. That was just not something that really we were allowed to do or that anyone made time for. So I thought that that was a luxury that some people got to do, but it's not what's going to get you anywhere in life, right? Like that's for lazy people. There was a weird stigma attached to it because what was actually celebrated and acceptable was, oops, one second. Okay. So what was actually celebrated and acceptable was being serious, was being hard working was accomplishing things right was having basically a perfectionism complex right um and getting all the a's and having everything impeccably clean and just like somewhat ocd like there was an obsession about ways things that had to be done where it was not done for the enjoyment of it, it was done because it had to or it should be done this way and says who right but like there was these weird rules that i grew up with so It wasn't acceptable just to relax and laugh and enjoy my life. It was like, when you finally get to where you're established enough, then you can. But how do you even know when you get to that point? Because there's always going to be something else that you're working towards. So it was a really messed 
up perspective, but I didn't really know any better as a child. I just thought that that's normal. That's what humans do because that's what these humans are doing. Right. And I didn't know how to process that either. Right. I didn't know how to process that. Like you're allowed to (laughs) have and enjoy your life. So it took me a long time to believe that God wanted me to enjoy my life. That was not something that made sense because my view of God as well was not healthy. And I didn't come from a legacy of faith. So I didn't know until years of my life that I could have a relationship with God, that my intuition was actually a prophetic gifting, that I actually have great sensitivity to listen to God and walk with Holy Spirit, which thank God for that, right? Um, And that that's something that I can enjoy and develop. I can develop this relationship with God, which gives me this sense of supernatural peace that surpasses all understanding and clarity and power and confidence and boldness and courage when otherwise I definitely would not have it, right? So I had to learn that God accepted me that I was acceptable, period, without the works, without all the works, without all the doing, without all the achieving, without all the accolades. Like I was already accepted and acceptable. So I'm not here to prove anything. I'm not here to suddenly get better and arrive somewhere and then I'm going to be okay. Like that was a very interesting perspective that I had to work on. So what I was doing was I was, and you might be here, Um, Or you might sense sometimes this comes up still, but I was trying to earn and deserve what I already had, right? Did you catch that? I was trying to earn and deserve what I already had, which is so backwards. And it really requires so much energy to show up that way where you're just trying and trying and trying. And you know, because people will use those words too. They'll say, well, I'm just trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. Stop trying, right? Like just stop for a second. Okay. So it's not our stuff. Hopefully you can tell this, right? And from that verse earlier, it's not our stuff that the enemy is after. It's our joy. And he uses circumstances to kill, steal, and destroy our joy. And it's on us at the end of the day, if we're going to keep the joy of the Lord, which is our strength, if we're going to let it be stolen. Okay. You, however, cannot keep this beautiful God energy, this joy, if you don't like yourself. And if you think that God is against you, that everything is set up against you, you cannot have and enjoy your life. But if you know who you are and who you belong to, you don't need to get distracted and concerned with whether or not people like you or celebrate you, whether or not people acknowledge you or not. You don't have to get caught up in all of that stuff. Okay. So I thought that it was wrong to love the me that God created me to be because I I knew punishment. I knew discipline. I knew dysfunction. Like you're either punishing yourself because you're not enough or you're running from life into some sort of addiction or dysfunctional pattern. That's what I saw. And that's what was familiar. So I learned that life was hard, that life was scary, that it was too much and that I couldn't be great at it. Hard life, right? Really hard life. You just can't breathe. You just can't relax, right? It's really, really hard when you're just pushing, 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 going all the time. But Genesis, it's Genesis 1, 10 through 31. All of those verses, God creates things. And then he says, it was good. It was good. It was good. So this tells me two things. One, that what God creates is good. Meaning I am, you are good because God created you. Next, it tells me also that God took a step back to reflect on his work and what he's doing to determine that it was good. But how often do we actually take a step back and reflect on what we're doing and really acknowledge what is good? Like how often do we do that? And what would it bring to our life if we decided to start doing that, right? So my encouragement is to take time often and think and reflect on the good. So a great example of this is God gave me the capacity to become a homeowner a few years ago. And that blew my mind. It was not what I pictured or planned for myself. It's not how I saw it playing out. I thought I was going to be married or I'm going to do this with a partner. It's not just going to be like an independent woman going and taking on this huge responsibility. That would freak me out, right? So I could have gotten caught up in 
all the yard work that I'm going to do or all the cleaning that that's going to take or the mortgage payments or all these things. However, even in this current season, right, a pandemic, I've been able to sit and enjoy this beautiful home that God has given me. I've been able to do some fun design projects and actually enjoy this beautiful home where it's actually become a retreat. Like I can just go to different rooms for different things and actually sit there and breathe and enjoy it. And that is a gift, right? But sometimes we just get these resources that we are praying and praying and praying for. And then we just vent and complain and make excuses about what it takes to keep them, which is not the point. Okay. So God wants to give you good things. And he also wants you to take time to enjoy what he gives you. Okay. So here's a couple of ways to do it. Number one. Well, here's a few ways. Number one, laugh, dude, laugh, lighten up, right? Like when you're around people that are like up to here and like stressed and just like caught up and like just nervous and anxious and stressed out and like a ticking time bomb, right? You don't like that. That actually can make you anxious. So sometimes you just need to let all of that stuff out and have a good laugh. Don't be so hard on yourself, right? Like give yourself the grace that God is giving you to operate in, right? Okay. So decide how do you do it? You decide that you're going to enjoy your day versus just letting your life go by and be a blur, right? A lot of people don't remember their life. They don't have these good memories because they just were busy. They just were busy. They don't even know what happened and what makes one year different than another year. Just another year, right? Like that is no way to live. And Psalm 90, 12 talks about this, but essentially the busier you are, the quicker life seems to go by and you can be busy, but accomplishing what and where is it actually getting you? So live slow enough to recognize what you're doing and what's going on in your day. Number two is reflect. There is, and think about what you're doing, right? There's a God rhythm, a divine rhythm. I call it God's Vibes Matter. That's where these books come from. There's three books over on julianapage.com about reclaiming your spiritual authority, co-laboring with God, developing this God rhythm in your life and the God's Vibes Matter devotional. But it's basically living with the leadership of the Holy Spirit in your life. And a cool revelation is that Jesus, right, lived with sensitivity. And sensitivity is a good thing, right? If you're sensitive to the Holy Spirit and spiritual things, that's really good. If you're oversensitive to things that are happening in the world, not so good, right? But Jesus was always busy about a mission. However, he was sensitive to the needs around him and he didn't miss opportunities to be a blessing. So that would be reflecting is good. Reflecting on, am I in alignment Am I in the flow? Am I operating in the divine God rhythm or am I in force and pressure and control and manipulation and stress and frustration? And do I even know what joy is anymore? Right? Like, okay. So one laugh, two reflect, and then three stop, (laughs) just stop. Okay. So Mark 10 46 is an example of an opportunity where Jesus didn't miss a divine encounter and he took time and he stopped. Right. But For you, what does this mean? It means notice people. Take time to make their life better. Take time to be an encourager. Take time to pray for somebody. Take time to bless somebody without any acknowledgement. Just take time to make that happen, right? In Ecclesiastes 2, 22 through 24, and then also 4, 7 through 8, really talk about how to make the most of your time. And there's also a question that's posed, why am I depriving myself of enjoyment? And I want to ask that to you on today. Why are you depriving yourself of enjoyment? If you are, assess, am I depriving myself of enjoying relationships that are in my life? Am I depriving myself of enjoying my purpose? Am I depriving myself of enjoying the resources and the gifts that God has given me? Am I? It's worth assessing. Are you enjoying what God has given you, right? There's a cool way to think about this. Give some, spend some, enjoy some, and God will increase your borders. I love that, right? But decide. The encouragement of this word on today is decide to make a chain. Don't just live your life. Enjoy your life. That is the impact that you can have. Don't just live. Enjoy your life. So I hope this message blessed you. I hope these three things are relatable and something that is simple enough for you to incorporate. But my encouragement is, and if you need permission, 
I give you permission to enjoy your life. If you had a turbulent past, if you were someone like me who didn't know how to do that, take the next step. Even if it's just gratitude, work to the point where you can slow down enough, right? Sometimes slowing down is work. Trust me. <laughs> so if you, if you are not familiar with that, do what it takes to slow down enough to have and enjoy your life. All right, guys, I hope this message blessed you. If you need some coaching in your life, you can visit julianapage.com. I have many different packages over there that you can pick from that can meet you where you're at and your budget as well. I also have a self-mastery course. It's a six-week self-paced course amazing to really help you ask better questions and mine your soul for answers. And then the God's Vibes Matter books are over on that website as well. So go check out julianapage.com. And until next time, guys, stay blessed.